Welcome to Travel in Style, the series that brings you the very best of the best. This is an incredible country to visit. Its vast rolling coastlines breathe a cooling wind that's such a relief from the muggy, dense heat. Here you can expect an average of 30 degrees Celsius, making this a perfect venue for lovers of the sun, sea, and sand. It's hard to imagine an oasis of luxury here, but it does exist, especially in the south. This, for instance, is Panalonium Beach, home to the Intercontinental Hotel. This is actually a very, very secluded part of Goa, and this is the resort is meant for people to just come and relax and have a very, very peaceful and soulful vacation. We are located in the very deep south of Goa, and we are actually closer to the Karnataka border as well, and we are 63 kilometers from the airport. We are on 90 acres of land and essentially we wanted so much of land because we wanted to accommodate the golf course within the resort. So we could not get any other land elsewhere, that's why we chose this location. But what facilities does the hotel offer? First and foremost we have a very nice golf course, it's a nine hole golf course which we have. The golf course itself has, is on 48 acres of land. The whole hotel is on 90 acres of land, it's the biggest hotel in Goa in terms of number of rooms, uh, inventory, and uh, the room size. It's 605 square feet is our base category room, which is the biggest room size for any hotel in Goa. Yeah, and besides the golf course, we have a 10, uh, 10 treatment room spa, which, which has got Ayurvedic treatment, Swedish mas massages, Thai massages in the works. Then we have a three-form swimming pool. that we have a very private beach, we've got water sports uh, as well. It's a clean beach because our hotel takes care to maintain the beach and to clean it. So we have our horticultural team who goes and you know, who cleans the beach every day in the morning and in the evening and we do a lot of plants etc also along the beach. The standard rooms here are the largest in Goa. The idea was to give a lot of space and you know, a lot of, uh, uh, lot of space for people to move around and to, for them to be very, very comfortable. You know. They are very, very spacious. This, uh, the presidential suite we are sitting in right now is 2,500 square feet. So these were the factors which actually uh, were deciding factors to get to this location. For those who need to explore, the local beach is just a five minute drive from the haven of the resort. The tourist shops sell wooden handcrafts and warm, almost liquid chocolate bars. Among the inexpensive curios, you will find treasures, perhaps mostly by meeting the locals themselves. It's a very different culture. People here are very fun-loving. You know, they are a bit laid back. They love, uh, they love their culture. They love their beaches. They love the lifestyle. It's very different from the rest of India. People here are, uh, you know, uh, very uh, liberal, if I were to say that. You know, they are very accommodating. They're very warm. They're very gentle, and they're good hosts. Sightseeing is a must to grasp this country. Inland, you will discover the unique smell of the cities, the street chaos, the hustle and bustle of town life, and of course, the food. It was the Portuguese influence in Goa that meddled with the local food, and so invented Vindaloo, now a household name in England, yet hardly heard of in the rest of India. The constant show stealer running the length of Goa is its stunning coastline. But inland, the country's rivers offer a raw tranquility that has to be experienced. Here, the fresh water attracts many different species of wildlife, especially our feathered friends. In just a few minutes, you will spot many different colorful varieties, both small and large.
One of the most common sights is this very impressive bird that's often mistaken for a white-bellied sea eagle, but is actually a Brahmani kite. Named after Brahman castle in India, some religions believe this bird is sacred because Brahman is also a concept of the supreme spirit found in Hinduism. In Malaysia, they are the bird gods of war. There is a wealth of wildlife in Goa, so much so it's one of the main tourist attractions. The roads are not good, so to see the best of the nature trips, it will involve a bumpy two-hour drive to the Bhagwan Mahavir Wildlife Sanctuary, high in the valleys of central Goa on the foothills of the Western Ghats. En route, you pass plenty of places to visit you'll see spice farms, temples, and elephant camps where you can hose down and wash these enormous creatures. Here you find a very different landscape, 240 square kilometers that's lush green and totally unspoiled. The sanctuary is home to leopards, spotted deer, jungle cats, Malayan giant squirrels, pythons, cobras, and many more reptile species. Although the panthers and leopards do exist, they are so rare you'd probably need a year or two to track them down. There are many wildlife guides who will drive you to the sanctuary, but to find the best, always check with the hotel concierge. These are macaque monkeys and are actually a close relative of ours. In fact, a recent study showed that humans and macaques share about 93% of their DNA sequence. Because of that, they are often used to research medicines such as vaccinations for AIDS, cancer, and other diseases. Thankfully, these guys are free to have fun and pick a few nits together, which of course they do in grand style. While it's fun to explore the real world outside a five-star hotel, it's always a wonderful feeling to return to the sanctuary of sheer pampering, feathered pillows, Egyptian linen, and fluffy towels. You get the picture? If not, this beach tells all. It simply oozes perfection and style. This is the beach of the Taj Exotica, arguably the best hotel in Goa. I say we're more exclusive than anybody else because we can offer you that privacy. See, Exotica is located in South Goa. The South Goan beaches are better than the North Goan beaches. They're virgin, silver sand beaches. Untouched because people have been able to come here only in the last 15 years. Before that, this was unknown. Why? Because it was inaccessible. So not developed and did not reach these shores. Uh, beginning the year 1995, slowly people began discovering the beaches of South Goa as being fertile, virgin, untouched territory where they could get a lot of privacy. Earlier, a lot of uh, tourists used to travel to the beautiful beaches of uh, the Caribbean, the Mediterranean and Southeast Asia. Goa was not known. Slowly when the Goan beaches got to be known, they started flocking here. There is a sense of passion and pride in all of the members of the staff here, and the general manager is no exception. The stunning feature of this resort is that we are a 56-acre resort located on a beachfront that's 800 meters long. So when you step out of your room and you see a beach 800 meters, you get shocked. It is inaccessible for anybody else, so it virtually becomes a private beach by default. Although in India, there's no such thing as a private beach. Villagers don't come to my beach, or nobody else can reach the beach. So for you to use the beach, you have to stay in this hotel. 800 meters, one end to the other end, 56 acres, I have only 140 room. So when you do a room to acreage ratio, it's extremely, extremely high. So even when I'm sold out and have all 140 rooms occupied, you ask this question, where are the guests? Spread out through the grounds are the garden villas built in Portuguese style. 
Although these are standard rooms, they are very large indeed, with over 600 square feet of living space. You look at the Exotica lobby, the Exotica lobby is close to 22,000 square feet. It's the biggest lobby in India today. A huge Portuguese, built like a Portuguese mansion, the lobby. 22,000 22, square feet lobby. We've got two small golf courses within one is a nine hole putting green and the other is a nine hole executive golf course for our guests to you know, enjoy and spend more time on the greens. Beautiful gardens, well manicured with exotic flowers, two lovely spas, one pure traditional Ayurveda, which is essentially treatments that were in India, not to forget yoga, because we've given yoga to the world. Few know that yoga is actually a word associated with the meditative practices in Indian religions like Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism. But for many people, the art of yoga is simply enjoyed for its health benefits, thanks to the stretching and sheer levels of physical activity. Another unique feature is we are the only resort in Goa that has private pools. So we've got 18 of our villas that offer you private plunge pools outside your villa. So you have the choice of enjoying the beauty of the sea or enjoying fresh water outside your room. And then, of course, there is the presidential suite. See, this suite is very, very unique because this suite, suite was, uh, has been designed by one of my uh, former chief operating officers who's put this entire suite into place. Her name is Jyoti Narang, along with designers. This suite uh, has got priceless uh, artifacts and antiques. Uh, a lot of the antiques in the suite is easily 100 years old. What's unique about the suite is that every time a guest checks out, the first thing we do is check if all the artifacts and antiques are still there or has he decided to take them along. It's a fact because some of the antiques are priceless and date back to the 17th and 18th century. We've got mirrors in the suite that date back to the Tipu Sultan's era with Islamic prints on it, Belgian crystal mirrors, wood carvings, carved antiques, and a lot of other photographs. The suite measures around 3,000 square feet. It's got its own private pool and it's got a lovely garden around it, lawns in front of it, that it's got its own hammock and sun lounges you can just lounge and relax by, besides your own private pool. We've had many heads of state who've stayed in these suites. The last head of state some time back was the Portuguese president himself who was in this very suite. Uh, we've had Hollywood stars, big Hollywood stars that have stayed here. Julia Roberts was last in the suite, 26th of Jan. She was here with Danny Moder, her husband, who is the, an acclaimed cinematographer. Uh, we've had Meg Ryan, we've had uh, the cast of Desperate Housewives, we've had uh, there's another legendary British actress, if I'm not mistaken, she was here Christmas week. I'm talking about the last four months, uh, Hollywood stars who've stayed here. Our biggest, single biggest feature is yes. that people who come here get addicted to this place. They never go anywhere else, they keep coming back. Our repeat clientele between the months of October to March is as high as 50% or more than that. And they're staying here not for three and four nights, for 21 nights, 15 nights. Some are staying for two months. They've been coming here for the last seven years, twice a year, in November and in March, over and over and over again. As a destination, uh, Goa is stunning, beautiful beaches. A lot, a lot of people know only about the beaches, but besides the beaches, you have some uh, great churches, temples. Uh, Goa has got everything. It's got the hinterland too, the mountains, a beautiful waterfall on the outskirts of Goa. It's got wildlife too. The Portuguese arrived here sometime in the 14th, late 14th, early 15th century, a date around 1498, that they actually came to Goa. But the food that they brought along was a food of all the stops en route to Goa. So their stopovers in Africa brought an African influence. So there are items like kafriyan, which is an absolutely African origin, because along with them came the African slaves that carried cuisines of Africa to India. And that's the reason how the Portuguese finally reached India and their food, their dietary habits reached India too. The Portuguese have left long and gone, but their culture still thrives. The people 
football was bought by the Portuguese. Goa is known as a big football destination. The easy going life was bought by the Portuguese. Uh, you see the houses, the architecture, uh, the, the very essence and the fabric of people out here. Very, very Portuguese. At the beachfront, you'll find a very upmarket shack, the Lobster Shack, famed for its grilled lobster with lemon garlic butter. But today, the chef is cooking a real local dish, grilled snapper with fresh vegetables. It's a common misconception that the only food in India is red hot curries. Actually, the curries in this country are much milder than those served in the Western Indian restaurants. In Goa, the food is very simple, and thanks to the Portuguese influence, often involves a lot of seafood and fresh vegetables. A dish like this can be found right along the coast, and so completely disproves the deli belly theory. Well, sadly, as a table tent is set for a romantic meal for two, it's time for us to leave this wonderful and colorful country. Welcome to the smallest nation in Southeast Asia. It's only 273 square miles, but crams in a population of four and a half million. The Chinese residents make up some 75% of the population, and so their influence here is strong. Chinatown is one of Singapore's biggest attractions for its temples and, of course, its shopping. This wealthy country has prospered from electronic production, tourism, and, of course, its financial services, and so boasts around 177 billion of foreign exchange reserves. This incredible colonial building was once the general post office. Today, it is arguably one of the finest hotels in the world, the Fullerton. The Fullerton Hotel has a long history. As a hotel, we're very, very young. We're only about six years old now. Uh, the building itself was built as an icon in 1928 and was um, housed the general post office in Singapore. The, we refer to our hotel as Singapore's own masterpiece uh, in many ways. Um, on the outside, we grace with this historic uh, facade, massive Doric columns, while the inside, we're very, very young at, our, at heart. You can see this when you walk in our hotel, um, the balance between light and color, uh, the interior design uh, is, is a very, very uh, special plant in, in terms of uh, architectural design. It's a very unique hotel uh, compared to many other hotels um, around the world. We're sitting right at the, at the mouth of the, of the river of Singapore. Actually, that's where the city was founded. Um, we're surrounded by water, which is um, in, in the Asian element, in feng shui, it's very, very good. We have water everywhere. We're surrounded by the ocean, by the river. We have a, a huge koi ponds with 88 koi. It's our signature koi, so it, it gives us a lot of luck and fortune. And we have wonderful staff who, who take service to a completely new level. Very personalized um, and, and beyond the extra mile. We're not a, a cookie cutter hotel, so to say. This stylish presidential suite with marble floors and a baby grand piano exudes elegance, style, and timeless sophistication on two levels. The smaller suites, if you can call them that, still have gigantic proportions, some with tall colonial pillars, majestic high ceilings, and furniture adorned with mother of pearl. The manager is right. This hotel is fabulously unique. Singapore is a shopper's delight, with malls offering familiar luxury brands in cool air-conditioned surroundings. Outside and back in the heat, 
Head for Orchards Road with its endless array of shops selling the latest electronic gadgets, shoes, furniture, and cosmetics. Once you have worked up an appetite, you will also find plenty of Western-style restaurants, cafes, and bars to suit all budgets and palates. To dine al fresco, look for the Boat Quay, or here at the newly developed Clark Quay. Here you will find five blocks of modern specialty restaurants and themed bars. Singapore really is a city with something for all tastes. Of course, that goes for accommodations as well. If the Fullerton was just a little too grand for you, check out and check into the new Majestic Hotel. Fun, trendy, quirky, call it what you like, but make sure you book well in advance for this new boutique hotel in the heart of the Chinese district. Most of people are actually taken back or they were very surprised that there, are, there is actually a hotel in Singapore with 30 rooms that are all different. Different indeed. Rooms include a mirror room, a hanging bedroom, and a newly added aquarium room. But her favorite room is really compact and makes the most of the space. Features two vintage bathtubs, iron brass, next to each other. It's a couple bathtub. It has a TV that rotates right round when you're soaking in the bathtub. That art piece is done by Sandra Lee, who has done three rooms in the hotel. But I think the best of those three are in the Cheshire Suite. Yeah, it's very dreamy, very whimsical, um, something very different from the other art pieces in the hotel. I suppose um, the rooms without these art pieces, they're actually quite bare. But you know when the artists come in and we have 15 over artists doing the rooms, you can be sure that they bring in their own character in the rooms. Therefore, when we say 30 rooms are different, they are really different. Well, some would say, it will be nice when it's finished. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for. Be sure to tune in again and travel in style with us as we endeavor to find the very best in luxury accommodations from around the globe. <laughs>